All right, boys and girls, today's lesson is going to focus on glazing. Now, it's irrelevant what you made with the clay, but it is important that we all follow exactly the same procedures when we do the glazes. And the glazes is where we're using actual pottery paint. It's a little bit different from the regular paint that we'd use on the surface of paper that we have in the art room. Now, what you see here are some projects that were actually made today. And these are what we call greenware. Now these are still uh, wet and you can see the clay is still grey and clay is a natural element, it comes from the ground and it has a lot of water content in it. Now what happens with these is that they actually have to sit for like five, six days, maybe a little bit longer until the water starts to evaporate from that clay. I'll know when it's ready to go into the kiln because when I run my fingers over the surface of them I'll get this grey dust. Then I know it's ready. I can't put them in any sooner because when you have water inside a clay it would then turn into steam and that steam would then make the clay explode in the kiln. We don't want that to happen. So this is greenware. Now when it's fired and it goes into the kiln for about eight hours it comes out after eight hours and 2000 degrees into this and we call this bisque. Okay, so you can see there's a difference in it. Now this is a ceramic. I'm just going to pull my camera out a little bit so we can see. And ceramic, bisque. Now this is what you're going to get back today. Now we should have all made sure that we had our names on the back. Alright, so you're going to get your own project back and you're going to get a selection of glazes. You're also going to get what I call a Lazy Susie. So I'm just going to push these just out of the way and put my Lazy Susie here. Now a Lazy Susie is a disc that we can rotate. I don't want to see you spinning it crazy because if you do, your clay object will fly off and smash. Now set your clay with its bottom down. Okay, so if you've got a fish or a face, you want the surface upwards, okay? And it's important to remember this procedure. You're going to get different colours of glazes. Now, when you see these, they've all got the names on top, but when you look at the colours, when it says orange, it's not a very strong orange, especially the red, the red looks very rosy. But that's not the true colour because these actually, when they go back into the kiln and they're fired at another eight hours for 2000 degrees, the colours become a lot stronger and brighter. I want to share with you just the stars that we've just finished, completely glazed, and you can see how bright those colours are. Okay, they're all done, nice and shiny and bright. It's important to follow this procedure. When you are glazing and you're changing colours, always wash your brush. When you put a colour on, put it on. So if I wanted to make the eyes first yellow, I'm going to brush the yellow on. You can see what I'm doing? And brush the other eye. So whatever I want yellow, I'm going to brush yellow. Then I want to go back again and give it a second coat. When it goes on for the first time, you can see it's already absorbed by the clay. So I want to give it a second coat. Second coat makes it stronger. If you want, you can give it a third coat and make the colors even brighter. Now what I'm going to do is cover the whole fish that I've got here with colored glazes from this tray that I've got. These are your colors, okay? But importantly to remember, never ever paint the base. So whatever it's sitting on, the back of your portrait, the back of your slab fish, or the bottom of your guppy fish, never paint it. This one has been glazed all over, but nothing is on the bottom. You do not paint the bottom because when it goes into the kiln and it gets to that high, high temperature, this is glass. And what glass does when it's really hot, it's like a syrup and it will actually stick to the kiln. And if it does, then I have to get a hammer and break it off and we don't want to do that. Even though I set it on stilts to make it stand, we don't want it to stick. So you set it on the Lazy Susie or even a lid and you work on everything that's on the surface. Give it two coats of colour. Then this says clear and boy oh boy this is not clear. This is like porridge. Okay. You're going to wash your brush and put it in I'm not going to give it that coat yet. And then you're going to give it three coats all over again, except for the bottom. You don't even have to lift it up. That's why this little guy is really good. You just turn him around. 
and after that once it's got three coats it's finished now you're going to think that it's going to affect the colors that you've got on there but it's not the the cover of the clear coat makes it look like it's all mushy but trust me this is a very very unusual paint it's a pottery paint and when it's all done you get this beautiful shiny coat okay so that clear coat becomes this glassy coat if you forget to do that it will just come out very flat you'll still have the colors um, and I don't have any that have haven't been done everybody really does like the shiny coat on it so boys and girls now it's your turn if you want to paint the whole thing one color and then put dots on it that actually works you can stripe it zigzag it it's your sculpture so whatever way you want to glaze it now it's your turn let's go make some art